as I'm doing this, I, I'm eyeballing the, the stuff that I gotta clean up. I see little parting lines and little, you know, I'd usually clean that up first, but I'm kinda excited to get this assembled, so I figured I'll just do it after. Right, let's just set that right into place. Go medium on that. <clears throat> Just see, I designed this with this little lip right here so I could assemble this. When you're dealing with multiple sizes of this, there's you got a hammer fit the, the crowns on these. Ah, come on. So this should just settle right in. We'll see, we'll see what the problems are. Let's see what we can do here. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> See if I can get that thing to drop. Ah, did it move? Shit. God. There. Into the drink. Closer. It's gonna be a cool one, man. We are about to behold the monkey king. Hey, those teeth just beaming. That's the line I needed. Cool. This thing is cool. I really, really like this one. Now we'll get the stone set. Scotty B will set the stones for us. What we're about to start here is the embattled Monkey King. I have to cut some solder. Oh. <laughs> that was so dumb. Oh my god. It's a reverse of what I just did in terms of the metals, but um, the other one was two, two metals, was silver and copper, but this one's gonna be silver, copper, and brass. So it's reversed with a little twist added, and then there's gonna be another twist added, which is in the name, the Embattled Monkey King. just radiates this heat man it just blows heat off so it's it's to get copper to maintain heat is it's very strange you notice a big difference 
especially if it's a big flat surface, like a knife handle or those pods. It's really, really kind of crazy. I got an idea. It might work and it might not work. Ah, damn it. All right. No, it's crooked. Pretty good. Now. spotted our first problem there. So now I'm going to have to watch out for that. It's a little bit of warpage in the wax that screwed things up here. Ah. now so what I did was I pulled that S gear off and the solder was still there that's why I flipped it over heated it up so that would pull the solder back to the back of the S gear then kind of cleaned it up and reapplied it so ah Clean out the crown. The whole thing up there on the, on the green. I like that side better. High speed. Ah. I don't like there to be a hard edge, you know? Mm -hmm. So I try to take take that down a bit. Yeah, and then I'll re-black it. I love the finishing on copper, man. Copper, such a cool finish. Where's my wheel? It's my favorite, it's my Seiki. Sacred wheel right there. Good. Got some little bites out of that ear. All right, so these are the stones that we're gonna set. Um, this this setting here is slightly bigger obviously the you know the crown jewel and then you got these two guys flanking it so we got one 
one one bigger stone here this is actually chrome diopside and then these are called um well just green tourmalines which can be also pink as well but these are are green so we're going to set these guys right here and then one here so this here is basically just beeswax and so for really small stones what you do is when you're when you're fitting the stone you just stick it right on the top there and that way you've got the point this is called the pavilion is what sits inside its seat there i really think so it looks like he's got a a, a brass crown here i think that color green with brass always makes like a pretty cool color combination on this particular one we're gonna do green and we're gonna basically just look at it under magnification and make sure it's all legit so this is where i do like most of my engraving but with stone setting you really don't have to do anything like that it can a lot of it can just be done by hand i'm gonna adjust this just a minute still quite a bit too small when you when you're getting your seat set you don't want any chatter chatter is like when you're when you're making your your seat and the, the burr starts bouncing around in there that's a round graver so what I'm gonna do there's beads that are on there, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly come in. It's tight, which is what I want it, but I don't want it to move out. So these are beading tools. All these here are basically like cups, that, so that's the biggest one, and it goes all the way down the smallest one right there you can't see it with the naked eye but that one right there it actually has a little cup on there that that forces a bead so depending on how big the bead is it's kind of just trial and error i kind of just pick the one i think is going to fit bead setting is what this is it's when you have a flat surface and basically you shave up metal and then you force it over the top of the stone and you form a little bead. So it's like these little balls basically hold, hold the side of it. Okay, so those beads are pretty good. The vertical ones are the ones I'll focus on here. So you gonna leave this one with me, Rick? You want me to do this one in blues? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah whatever you got. Oh, reds, blues, whatever. I've been drinking. 